on one of our visits to Wankafu. The focus of our visit at that time was to capture in real time the conditions at the world to use for a social media campaign. And so heads of the committees and the project team went with some um, cameramen to go and take videos for it. In the process, we went through every room we inspected because for projects, we needed it to be able to come up with a project's plan. Now, as we were about to finish and we were walking out of the world, I'm not sure what happened, but somehow I realized that it was lunchtime and they were about to serve food. So I said, let me go to the pantry to see what it is like when they are serving food. And maybe that will guide us when we are renovating the kitchen. Now, as I stood by the woman serving the food in the pantry, I just raised my head through the window and I saw the back of a wheelchair. So I walked out to where the wheelchair was just to find out if it was just a wheelchair that receives guests into the world or there was someone actually in it. As I walked closer, I saw a patient sitting in it with a nurse standing by her. So I asked the head nurse who is here today, do you also take disabled patients? And she said, no, madam, we don't take disabled patients. So I said, what is she doing here? And she said, she's also, she's also in need of What's wrong with her? Where did she come from? And the story she told me, I'll never forget for the rest of my life. They had given her a name, Akosia UCC, because she did not have a name. She had been left in the middle of nowhere at UCC to die. And some good Samaritan had found her and had brought her to Ankafo. This girl, and this is a young girl, had been at Ankafo for the past 11 years, and she was being taken care of by the staff. A disabled girl who we suspected was also autistic because she was drooling from the mouth. She could not use her hands to do anything. She could not speak. And so the only way they would communicate, they would speak to her, and she would just smile. with no complaints. And so when I came back, <laughs> when I got back, I told my mates that we needed to set up a disabled facility there the nurses would have to lift her up, bath her, clothe her. And there was nothing there that would allow that. So yesterday, I was on the phone with the head nurse talking about paint. And I said, how is my girl doing? And she said, Madam, she passed away. So sad to me because to be abandoned, not to have somebody hug you and tell you they love you, to live in the body and not be able to speak, not be able to walk. And I tell you, the nurses were doing a wonderful job. No family member, and to think that she had died alone. And she had not been able to live long enough to see the work we were doing. And that broke my heart. So this is why we have this image here. This is an image of a wheelchair with someone walking into the clouds. And I believe this is her. She's finally free from that wheelchair. 
and she's walking up to our main car. That's the bed, and I believe that heaven is rejoicing. So as we do this, I don't want her death to be in vain. This is very personal to us now. We want to make sure that we make a difference at Anchor 4. I have learned that one in four individuals will experience mental health issues in their lifetime. So it's closer to us than we think. We have relatives, we have friends, we have people around us, and I ask myself, why is there such a stigma around it? When probably all of us have someone in our homes who has experienced mental health. Maybe if we had talked about it enough, maybe the family of this girl may not have left her in the middle of UCC to die. Maybe they would have asked someone for help. But because we believe there's so much witchcraft around this illness, we all hide it in our homes. And when people get fed up, they just sent their loved ones away to die. So I stand here today, and you see me as one person making this presentation to you. But I actually stand here with a million invisible people behind me. These are the next generation, and the next, and those after them. We have all been placed on this earth for a purpose and we all have a story. Now the, gen the next generation's question to us here today is, what legacy are we leaving behind for them? Let's stop the stigma. Let's be kind to patients with mental illness. And for me, let the lives of Akosia and all the other mental patients who have lost their lives fighting this battle, be worth something to us. Please support this cause. It is a worthy cause, and you just can't go wrong with us. I leave you with a question. What's your legacy? What are we leaving behind for the next generation? Thank you.